A few weeks ago I put out a video about a retro hi-fi timer. Now the reason I bought that is because it has a nice flip clock in it. But it's definitely not the cheapest way to go and get a flip clock. If you go on eBay you'll see there's plenty of different options available at all sorts of budgetary levels. For example if you wanted you could spend £250 on this large wall clock although it does have a nice calendar mechanism built in as well. And then there's this one at £75 but that looks particularly nice. I'm going to go more the budget end. So I'll pick this one up here and this one as well. And then finally this one. So those three arrived. The first one only took six days, £33.62. The reason I like that one, six digits. So it's got a constantly moving seconds on it and it's got an alarm. The next one is a little bit larger. It took a couple of days longer to arrive, but it's cheaper than the six digit clock. And then finally, I got the cheapest one that I could find. So this cost just under £10 and took just over two weeks to arrive from China. So now I've got three different flip clocks and we'll have a look at all of them and see if any of them are actually worth buying or if they're all a complete disaster. So starting off with the cheapest one of the three, it comes in a pretty naff cardboard box. It's got this instruction leaflet here. Let's just have a look at the bottom there because there's something a bit odd. Please set more one minute to adjust time for making up tooling short accuracy. Okay, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I think we'll uh, do that. Brilliant. Okay, so it's all plastic. The front's uh, plastic as well. It feels sort of lightweight and cheap, although it doesn't really look it at a distance. I suppose that's all that matters. Um, on the back here, we've got two little compartments and we've got a hook hole that we can hang it on the wall with. So that is the mechanism for changing the hours and minutes. You've got little levers that you move down and you click them and that moves the digits. And then of course at the bottom here, we've got the battery compartment that holds two AA batteries. So I'll just pop those in there and you move on the digits like this. Of course, with flip clocks, they only go in a forward direction, but you move the minutes separate to the hours, although the minutes will, of course, knock on the hours when it gets round to the full hour. But you can see that it's pretty easy to set. So just click that into position. We've got an AM and PM indicator in there. We'll move on to the next one. This is the one with six digits on. Now this was the one that I was hoping was going to be my favourite because I like the idea of having constantly moving digits. If you like flip clocks then you want to see them flip over really. That's sort of a metal plated front on there which gets fingerprints on it pretty easily. A bit of an unusual design. It all looks like a sort of skeleton version that should be in something else but it's all out in the open. Now the batteries go in the bottom of there. We'll just have a look at the instructions. The instructions are actually for the larger one that I've got but it says for all flip clocks. We've got this other instruction leaflet here which tells us a little bit more about the model that we've actually got. Uh, but it shows you they're all pretty much made by the same people. Look at the bottom there. Average monthly difference plus or minus 90 seconds in a month. It takes uh, the batteries that last for about six months, it says there as well. So yeah, these things aren't going to be the most accurate things in the world. So it takes two C cell batteries. We just pop those in the bottom of there. Uh, put the cover back on there again. And with this one, we just twist the end here. There's only uh, one thing. You just spin it around till you get to the right time. You can see the seconds are already moving on the right hand side there. Now, the other thing that this one has got is an alarm. So you see that little red indicator on the left hand side, that's pointing to a wheel, which is the time that the alarm's going to go off. Now you can only set that with about a 15 minute accuracy, I think, but you spin that around to the part that you want. And there's a little button on the top that if that is in the downward position, the alarm would be going off. And obviously to turn it off, you just um, pop it into the upward position. So I think that looks pretty nice, actually, the way the seconds keep moving on there. It uh, keeps your eye interested, but we'll come back to that in a second. Let's get the big one out of the box. Now, this one's made by the same people that make the six-digit clock because they include the same instruction leaflets with both of them. But this one, quite a lot larger. We've got a metal base on here. It's a hollow kind of bell-type base there. We've got a plastic section down the middle that's coloured silver to blend in and then metal on the top again across metal down the front. So I don't know if it's to everyone's liking the design, but I think it looks pretty neat, especially on a shelf with those large digits. It's something you can read from a massive distance. It's a lot larger than I was expecting. I was thinking it looked a little bit smaller on the picture, so I'm quite happy with that. Now that takes one D cell, which just goes in the back of there. So you just slide that in there and then the hatch goes on there and you just rotate it into position. So pretty simple to set these things up, of course. Now let's just try and get the time matched on these two. So I'll just spin this one round. Something very satisfying about flip clocks when you just spin them and you see the digits sort of falling into position there. 
but we'll just get them just about right. I mean, I can't do the seconds exactly, of course, but that should be pretty close. Right, so we've got all three clocks set up now, and they do look pretty smart, especially the middle one with those large digits. Now, they're going to flip over to 4.59 in a second, so just have a look at the middle one. It's just about to do it now, and then the right one follows. So there we are, they're both 4.59. Now, look at the left, see what happens. Oh, we're back to 4.58 again. We never moved on from 4.58. Now, let's uh, try and figure out what's going on there. We'll fast forward a couple of minutes. Right, here we are. The other two have got to 5.01 now. The left hand one's still at 4.59. Oh, and it moved over to 5, but 7 seconds past the hour. Very strange. Let's just move that one on a minute to try and get them all in sync. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to leave them overnight and we'll come back in the morning and see how they're doing. Right, so here we are the next morning. It's 8.50 a.m. I've left them in position since I set them at 5 o'clock the previous night. And to my surprise, the one on the left seems to have kept up with the other two, albeit its seconds seem to be having a little bit of an issue. We'll go back to that in a moment. Now, at 5 o'clock, the one in the middle was about one second ahead of the one on the right. But now, if we look at the two, you can see the one on the right has changed to 8.51, and the one in the middle still hasn't. So it's going to take a few more seconds for that one to flip over. Now, I'm not sure whether the one on the right has gone fast, the one in the middle has gone slow, but put it like this, they're not exactly as accurate as an atomic clock. Right, let's just go back to this six-digit clock for a moment. It does seem to have a couple of issues. When the seconds get to 42, they seem to get stuck, and then a few more pile up behind it, and when there's enough weight, it knocks it down. That could probably be solved with a bit of cleaning or adjusting or something. But one thing that I've got a particular issue about is when it gets to the end of a minute, it doesn't knock the minutes over. Look at this, when it gets to 59 seconds and zero it still stays on 8.59. It's only when those seconds get to a random number that the minute moves across. In this case, it's 10 seconds and then it'll move across. But it's not always 10 seconds, it just seems to be random. Now that shouldn't be happening. Look at this little metal bar in the middle here. Notice how it moves towards the hour number as we get towards the top of the hour. And I'm gonna use a super slow motion uh, camera here to show you what happens. So we're at 59. When the 59 drops down, look at the little lever moves across, lets the three pop down. I'll show you that again. So look for that little metal lever at the top. The 59, it's got that wing that sticks out and it moves that and that's what moves the hours on. So there should be like a little wing between the two which moves the digits. But as you can see here on the seconds, there's no connection with the minutes at all. The seconds are just working independently. There's no little wings sticking out of there knocking the minutes across. So you can see from the top here, the two things are completely unconnected. So you kind of think, well, hold on a minute, are seconds actually seconds, or is it just some sort of decoration? Let's just have a look at how the cogs are working here. So the hours are run off the minutes, and the minutes themselves are run off a little cog. I'll just show you here, it's this sort of black cog at the top here, which then goes to this white one at the bottom, which has a bar that goes across to this white one, which is then driven by a smaller one that comes out of the motor unit at the end here. Now, how are the minutes run? Well, they've got a separate cog, completely unconnected, goes through there and just spins it around. And they just drop down because they hit a bar at the top and, and fall one at a time. Now, of course, there is only one motor driving this mechanism, so everything is connected inside there. So that might make you think, OK, I'll get the zero on the seconds just to coincide with the top of a minute and then it'll stay synchronised. But it would be a fruitless task because the seconds aren't really a minute. Sometimes it seems a little bit over a minute, sometimes a little bit less. So after a couple of minutes or so, you'll find your seconds are again out of sync with your minutes. Now, as much as I like the idea of constantly flipping digits, if they're not counting off seconds and they're not moving over the minutes when they reach zero, then they're more annoying than anything else. I'm going to have to move that clock to one side and let's have a look at the cheapest one of the three. Now, the only issue I've got with this particular clock is that it's a little bit noisy. Let's just have a listen.
Now, there are plenty of people out there that don't have any issue at all with a ticking clock, whether it's a grandfather clock or a mantelpiece clock, they're quite happy to live with that. For me, it's a little bit annoying. I think I'd have to place this one somewhere out of the way where it didn't really matter, perhaps in the kitchen or something. Other than feeling a little bit cheap, that's the only issue that I've got with it. Now, the largest of the three clocks that I bought, that is my favourite of these. I think it's quite an impressive design. It looks interesting. You can see it from a distance and it doesn't cost as much as the six digit one. So I think this one isn't bad at all. The only time you hear this one is when it flips over a digit and then it's still pretty quiet as well. So overall, my pick of the three is definitely the large clock followed by the cheaper of the three clocks and then in last place because of the annoying seconds is the six digit clock however i did try and buy another clock a four digit version which is also an alarm clock i ordered that one but it never turned up somewhere between china and my house it just vanished now, if you're interested in buying a flip clock, I'll of course have some affiliated links in the video description. I should mention that the large flip clock, my favourite of the three, is available with either black or white digits. I'm going to have links for that one, as well as the cheapest one of the three for Amazon in the UK and the US. And then I'm going to have a general link for eBay, which should take you through to the flip clock section. And then there's loads of different designs to choose from. So you can pick from a lot of different models there, all of which probably use the similar mechanism. I should mention of course that these flip clocks I don't think they keep particularly good time so if that's your number one criteria maybe you need a more conventional clock but if you want something that looks quite interesting then definitely that large one there is something that you could put on a shelf and I'm sure it would draw quite a few admiring glances but that's it for the moment as always thanks for watching Oh, come on, come on, refresh, refresh. Yes, yes, I've done it, I've done it, yes. You've done what? Finally, after two years of trying, in your face, internet, worldwide plebs, the king of the internet's here, hashtag me, www.winner. Okay, I'm not interested. Hey, oh, what's all this racket about? I've done it. You haven't. You better not be pulling my leg. No, look, there, there. Go on then, show me. Okay, now I want to know again. What is it? By heck, I thought I'd never see the day. Oh, I'm so proud of you, son. I wish your mother was here to see this. Yeah, me too, Dad. Perhaps we can show her when she comes back from the shops. And just think, that psychiatrist wanted to commit you. And I thought you'd never amount to nothing. And yet, here we are, and you've managed to achieve this. What is it? Just say what it is. I have managed to post the very first comment on a YouTube video. You did what? Yes, you heard right. You are now the wife of a man who managed to post the word first under a YouTube video. Tell them that next time you go down to the gym. Well, I'll be telling them something, but it won't be that. Come on, son, I'll take you down to the Labour Club. Once we tell the lads down there, we'll drink for free all night on this story. OK, don't stay up, because it looks like it's going to be a late night.